Hi everybody, welcome to Sprague Wood Turning. My name is Jim. So this video is going to be more geared towards the woodworkers and the wood turners that follow me here on YouTube. Uh, I get asked a few questions about the circle cutting jig that I've made. And as you can see, it looks probably a little different from the last time you've seen it. So that's what this video is going to be. Uh, I'll go over the construction of this and the way that it works. And hopefully you can take something away from it. If you haven't subscribed, please consider doing that. And of course, that thumbs up will help with the analytics, sharing my videos on your social media platforms is a bonus as well. And please leave a comment down below. All right, so I'll first cover the construction of it and then I'll show you how it works. All right, so this is the underneath. And what this is, is a full sheet of half inch plywood. And this is a oak runner that goes in the miter slot on the bandsaw. Make sure you use a hardwood uh, so that it doesn't wear out because you do have to move the rig in and out occasionally. Um, I did install this piece of oak on the back side of it uh, to take any flex out of it. As you can see, you've got quite a cut here because for moving the rig in, in and out, uh, you don't have a whole lot left here. So this was flexing a little bit. So then I put this oak runner on there to stiffen it up. Um, the miter tracking, let me drop this down here. You can get this, you should be able to get this at any um, woodworking store in Canada. I bought this at Busy Bee and um, it's just a standard um, miter track. On the top of this, and this is new, this is actually material that you shoot hockey pucks off of. Yeah, I'm Canadian. <laughs> so um, I was given one of these and I did have tuck tape on the top of this, but I found it was wearing out. And um, so anyway, this should be a better alternative to, um, to the tuck tape. And so what I did was I lined up the miter tracking wherever I wanted it to go and of course drilled a hole and sandwiched the miter tracking with two pieces of plywood and then glued and screwed everything down together and that makes a pretty robust table uh one one consideration to think about the the thicker you make this the less distance you're going to have under the bearings on your on your on your bandsaw so you know i can typically cut 12 inches under the bearings on my bandsaw with this in place it's only going to be 11. all right let's let's go put it on the bandsaw and i'll show you uh what the next step is here so of course you have to have a slot cut in this so we'll go around the bandsaw blade and then that little cleat just goes into the miter slot on the table and then that way it can't crack um Speaking of blades, these are wood turners. These are called wood turner woodworker blades. It's half inch, three teeth per inch, and has a very aggressive set on it. So it doesn't bind in green wood. So if you're actually rounding bowl blanks uh, or working with green, green wood resawing it, I highly recommend getting these. There is a link in the description below to R&D bandsaw blades here in Canada. And they make any length and any size, including carbide blades, if you're interested. Um, all right, so you get that in place. Now it wants to do, if you've got a big heavy blank on this side, it wants to do this number. So just take a clamp. Clamp it down. Now you can put a heavy blank on this end and it won't flip out. You could put a support down on the bottom here, but you have to sometimes be able to slide this table in and out. And I'm a little worried about it kind of binding on the ground. Maybe if you put like a, a wheel on it, maybe that might be the answer to that. But so far this is working fine. This is nowhere is gonna be in the way at all. Uh, the bulk of the material is gonna be over here. Um, you can use a C-clamp as well to hold that. Now, the piece of metal that I've got that goes in this miter slot is actually from my miter gauge. Get that. Uh, sorry, the lighting isn't exactly the best. There it is. And you can see that it's got a washer so that it can't fall out. 
And on the other end is a quarter inch bolt that I threaded this and screwed it in. And there's a little set screw on the side as well. So it doesn't come out. It slides in. And with a, this is a half inch bandsaw blade, so you can only do the smallest diameter is about six and a half inches, somewhere around there. Anything above that size, it works fine. If you wanted to cut smaller stuff, you'd have to put a smaller blade on there. And to hold this in place, so you drill a corresponding hole in your block, and then you drop it onto the pin. You slide the piece up until it makes contact with the blade, turn the bands on and spin it and it cuts it perfectly. Um, to hold this in place, all I'm using is a C-clamp. All right, so I've got a couple of hickory crotches that I want to round. So let's prep those and I'll show you how this thing works. I should also mention when I put this on, I sanded the back side of this because this is a plastic material. Um, it's probably not going to stick all that great. So I sanded the back side of it with 80 grit and I used Peel Premium to hold it in place. So I don't think it's going to go anywhere. I did tack it with some brad nails in certain places just to keep it uh, from moving when it was drying. Anyway, I flipped it upside down and put a bunch of weight on it, so it's 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 good and flat. All right, let's mark up some um, bowl blanks here. All right, so this is um, two sides of a hickory crotch, and of course it's pretty tough stuff to to cut up. Uh, I've got all these different templates. What we're going to do is go with the 14 inch. Actually, you might even be able to use the 15. Hold on a sec. To be perfectly honest with you, it really doesn't matter. This is a 14 and a half. Yeah, it's pretty good. Take your drill. One thing to uh, note, if this needs to be a really flat surface, if it isn't, if it's cupped or dished or concave or convex, then you might have a problem with it, with the pin um, getting in the hole and staying there when you're rounding. All right, let's round it. I just want to actually point something out before we actually round. I've got an indexing mark here on the side of my, of my bandsaw arm, the arm that comes up for the top part. Um, this rig needs to be set in the right place. If it's too far in, it, the blade won't work and if it's too far out it won't work either. You'll have to find that sweet spot on your saw and then just put a mark, corresponding mark on the side and then you know that when it's there you know that it's going to cut properly. The other thing too is I use dust collection with mine uh, so if you have a, a throat insert like so make sure you take it out that way it doesn't affect your, uh, your dust collection. I do find that sometimes the worst part of this is finding that indexing hole. There it is. So what I like to do is bring this up so it's up close to the bandsaw blade. Lock it down in the back. So there you go, you got yourself a perfectly round bowl blank to go on the lathe, and you've got the center for it. Let's do one more. All right, so now I'm gonna show you, um, if you've got a piece that's not the right size, or you haven't got a template for it, 
What you do is slide this back, unlock the bar, move it forward. Lock it down again, and then start the bandsaw. I'll move in until my marks correspond on this side. I'll lock it down and then spin it. There's another perfectly round bowl blank ready for the lathe. All right, well that's it for the video. I realized that this was geared more towards wood turners and woodworkers. Um, the maximum, if you're curious, the maximum diameter that I can cut on this is 34 inches. You're really only limited by your miter tracking. If you put miter tracking further out, then you could probably cut even bigger than that. I can only turn 20 inches over my lathe bed. And actually, I think 34 inches is the maximum diameter on the outward end of my lathe as well. So, you know, I don't need anything bigger than this because I'm not making round tables or anything like that. Um, yeah, let me know in the, in the comments what you think about this. Uh, having a support on this end would certainly be beneficial, but I think it would have to be on a caster so you could roll it in and out. Uh, with that said, when you get finished rounding, and you push the rig forward, uh, make sure that the blade comes to a complete stop before you actually take any of the material away, unlike I did in the video. And yeah, I mean, it works great. Uh, I use all these materials. Uh, I use all these offcuts to heat my home and to heat my, my shop. So it's a no brainer for me. And it's a lot faster when you step to the lathe with a, with a round bowl blank already. And you have an indexing center already. So uh, that's a bonus as well. All right, so anyway, there'll be another video posted on Friday that will be a fractal burning um, salt and pepper mill set. That's what we're gonna be doing on Friday. And I guess that's it. Please leave a comment down below. And if you haven't subscribed, please consider doing that as well. All right, till Friday, take care, stay safe. Don't forget that bell. See you then.